Continuation of Part 1 I'm sorry, Your Majesty. To get her to come with us, she had to be striked. A male beside you said, You still couldn't see anything as he pulled away. Didn't I tell you to bring her unharmed? What if her body couldn't handle it? He spat at the male. Look at her now. Not being able to see a certain, a certain view around her. He yelled. He seemed to be pointing at you. Bring her to my room. He spoke as he turned. Him turning into the other colors that were just there. You were picked up and brought somewhere. So you could tell. Colors still being blurry. Until you were placed down on something soft. It was so nice. It must felt like you could have slipped right there and then. You grabbed one of the pillows and brought it to you. You were going to cry, but the door opened. It wasn't that man. It wasn't a woman. Actually, never mind. It was a woman. She brought you something in front of you, and you couldn't tell what it was. Are you hungry? She asked. You looked at her. No. He spoke hesitant at first. His majesty wants to make sure you are fed well. She placed it down. If you do not eat, all right. She asked as she left. The sun's lights were falling. You just wanted to know where the hell you were. Why am I here? Came out of your mouth before she left. Oh, see? We pop... Po our population has gone down for years, so his majesty went through the old text to see how we originally reproduced. He found out that a human was the one, and then their children were able to reduce with others, so that's why you're here. She smiled as she clasped her hands, and your face just stared. So I'm uh, just a incubator? You asked. She just nodded. Yeah, that's really it. But our king will bring you back once the first kin are born. She smiled. And how long will that last? You asked. Your mind racing with everything. Hmm. More than 20 years? She smiled. What? You spat. She giggled. I know, it was such a short time. She smiled, her hands on her cheeks. That's not a short time for me. It'll be my... Your age plus 20. I spat. She just looked at me. Well, I'm sorry. You were found with the golden statue after all. She sighed. What? You asked. She then pointed to the same statue. But it was gold. Pure gold and not that wooden piece of junk. You just couldn't believe it. What was happening to you? This was just all too much. I'll be on my way then. She got up and smiled. If you try to leave again, you'll have a 20 feet drop or your legs will be broken. <laughs> she giggled as she left. God, she was creepy. You looked around the room. This one was different from the one you were woken up into. There were mixed colors of gold, red, and some blues here and there. There were many things in the room with a bed that was like ten times the size of the other one you were in. The covers being silks and smooth, and you were still in almost nothing they had you in. You felt so bare that you didn't know what to do. You didn't know where the heck the clothes were, and you wanted to be in something different. Maybe possibly your old clothes, so you could at least feel... clothed, at least... Yes, they did look nice, but you were, um, completely different people than what you were used to. You stood up, finding that your foot was not locked like the first time. Why? Was the only thing that was in your head. You may be wondering what the heck you were doing. Well, escaping, of course. What else? You opened the door quietly and closed it making your way through the halls and stopping somewhere someone wouldn't see you if they moved by. You weren't about to leave out of the front way, so you were trying to find a way to the back. 
He started to find maids moving in and out of one place, so he followed them inside the room to see a door leading to the outside. Yes, Claudius, was all you thought, making your way and running out of sight. Yes, you were out and now you had to find how to get back to the human area. You just didn't know, as you looked around through the trees and bushes. Meanwhile, what do you want us to do, your majesty? I asked a bowing guard. Don't do fucking shit. She'll come back. She won't survive out there for more than a week. He watched as you walked more into the forest. Follow her and make sure she, to bring her back when she's given up and alive. He ushered the guard away. God, why was this human so damn frustrating to him? Just the way they didn't listen to a single thing he said. But he kind of likes it. Having someone who wants to define him. <laughs> He'll break that spirit real quick. And, well, here are the next couple of days. Nothing was new. He did his daily tasks here and there, but heard no word from you. You were still out there, fighting like a damn boar to get back. But you were growing weak. Bite marks all around your body from snakes and, well, spiders. And, well... Who knows what else? And those bites draining your energy. So, when you came back, you were ordered once again into his room. And, well, you stayed. He was quite happy. You couldn't quite tell. The way your body quivered apologizing over and over again until you fell asleep. <laughs> he loved the way you felt against his body. He knew you wouldn't leave him now, that you knew this city is the only safe place you'll have. <laughs> Days had passed since I came back. Everything hurt. Being cleaned was nice, even a full belly. He was right, though. I wouldn't have lasted a week out there. He was right. I lasted five days before passing out. It was hot out there. And being back in the cold palace, I liked it. I guess that I would have to stay and play nice here until I can finally leave. You sighed, looking out at the sun shining day.